Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, my partner John Coleman and I are delighted to once again be with Dr. Liz Lister. How are you, Dr. Liz? Wonderful. Thank you. How are you? Hey, great. Thank you. Doing great. Dr. Liz, I read something recently, uh, I, a, a phrase that I'm not familiar with. It was functional medicine. Now, that sounds like it should be self-explanatory, but uh, what is functional medicine? That's an excellent question. I think that more and more people are hearing that phrase and wondering that, so that's a wonderful question. I use the phrase functional medicine as distinct from what I call conventional medicine, or some people refer to it as allopathic medicine. So it's useful to say, what are we talking about with conventional medicine? And that'll help us answer your question and talk about what is functional medicine. Most of medicine, the way we know it, at least in the United States, or what we call Western medical approach, is disease driven. It's detecting the disease, it's diagnosing the disease, it's focusing on the symptoms that someone is having. That is important, but it's really one end of a spectrum. If you picture down here, and then you've got this big long spectrum all the way out to here, and up at this top end is optimal health and well being. All right. So most of medicine, conventional medicine is focused over here. And then you've got this big transition area in here where people are not optimally healthy, but they're not quite having symptoms yet, right? A lot of times by the time someone's not feeling well, something else is going on. And functional medicine addresses that very large transition area on that spectrum. So is that the same as holistic medicine? Yes. Holistic is a word that was coined to apply to medicine about a hundred years ago or so. And it refers to, so again, functional medicine, to give you more of a definition, is looking at a systems approach in the whole body. So holistic is another way to say that. It seems to me that, um, uh, and maybe you can confirm this, that you don't get a whole bunch of training in medical school even today, you, were, you went uh, some years ago on uh, two things we've heard you speak about. You never get a, a, a much more than a day in nutrition uh, and good food. And uh, you never probably never get anything on holistic medicine other than things you might talk about yourself with your colleagues as you're uh, learning because a, a big farmer that probably is very, has very little interest in uh, in something that they can't sew uh, with an RX next to it. Unfortunately, I think you're absolutely correct. What's happening in medicine for the most part is the way the specialties are arranged is that when doctors go into a specialty, they're ending up sub, sub, sub specialized, right? So it's gotten so bad that you know, you hurt your hand and you go to an orthopedic surgeon and you hurt your hand over on your pinky and, and the orthopod says, sorry, I'm a thumb doctor. Okay. It's <laughs> so, so specialized that they're not looking even at the whole system, much less at the whole person. Okay. This is why functional medicine has become popular looking at is So it's really an approach. It should include all the same types of methods, scientific approaches that regular conventional medicine uses. However, it's looking more at systems-based and also more at root causes. So it, it seems to me that um, uh, when I think of uh, uh, functional, as you're describing them, or uh, holistic, is that I think of... Uh, uh, Chinese medicine, herbs, and and acupuncture, and non-traditional Western medicine, and I don't know that um, uh, the little I've read about it uh, that they have uh, terribly worse outcomes. Uh, act actually, they may not have so many things that they have to treat. Uh, uh, I read a book called The China Study, and there's a lot of less that they have to treat because 
of their eating habits and uh, the kind of medicinal things. And even uh, Native American uh, uh, tribes have uh, different types of way of treating things. So is it just that we're uh, tied up in a, a medical industrial complex in the West? Uh, or is it as, uh, not as simple as that? Okay, it's never super simple. There's always complexities to it. But I agree with what you're saying. I think that research is largely driven in the United States by the pharmaceutical industry because they need to be able to come up with a product that they can then recoup the costs of their research. So we've developed a, an appetite for a pill solution. Okay, now this is partly human nature, I'm gonna tell you, because this is other parts of the world as well. But for sure in this country, we've developed sort of a give me the result fast type of desire for how to be treated. And then that supports the whole system where we have pills that treat symptoms or that treat illnesses rather than looking at the root cause of illness. I like the metaphor of a tree. I use this with my patients a lot. And I talk about the fact that conventional medicine treats the leaves and the fruit versus functional medicine approach that is looking at the roots. What is going into the roots and then is going to form the strength of the tree trunk and is ultimately going to influence the leaves and the fruit that the tree is bearing, which obviously takes longer. So sometimes it's important to treat a symptom. I'm not telling people to tolerate symptoms. However, conventional medicine tends to focus and stop once the symptoms are treated, whereas the functional approach is looking at the root cause and really getting the whole infrastructure nice and strong so that ultimately over time, you don't need the medicines that treat the symptoms. So what is the, or, or what can we look for? What do we, uh, how do we as consumers use the, this idea of functional medicine? What are we supposed to be doing? Excellent question. So first of all, there are practitioners, doctors who espouse the functional medicine approach, who we educate ourselves in that. There can be conventional medical doctors who have that training and that background, but also avail themselves of, of learning about the functional approaches and also looking at the whole person, not just treating one disease, but keeping in mind at a minimum, I want doctors to be in a, I want patients to see doctors who are in a setting where they can easily consult with colleagues. They're going to keep their minds open to other body systems that might be influencing what's going on. When I have a patient who tells me that a, a cardiologist had them speak with a pulmonologist or a different specialty, I like to hear that. That says to me that they're thinking from a systems approach and they're thinking from a whole body approach and not just looking in their one field, right? They say that if your tool is a hammer, everything's a nail. Well, we don't want that. We want the doctor looking at the person as a whole. So as again, as consumers, as patients, um, we should really be taking the whole body approach. You know, we I think we tend to go see the doctor. Well, my shoulder hurts and we forget that maybe it's something about not sleeping properly. You know, right. it's not just a right. shoulder problem. It's a sleep problem. I, I'm making that up. But we need to think functionally as well, don't we? Exactly. You got it. Very good. A and like Art that. is a big function, functionality I, I, guy. I'm a function kind of guy. So what are the, uh, the right kind of uh, uh, questions to ask you, the, your current doctor? Uh, I'm very happy with him. And he gives me lots of smart little hints that, but basically because he had a mother too and he listened to her. So, you know, get more sleep, lose some weight, yada, yada, yada. He's absolutely right. But uh, where were the people, I consider you in many ways to be a, a, a functional specialist because you're looking at the root causes in, in your practice, everything you've ever described. Yes. How do we, how do we uh, let's say you're looking, you move to a new neighborhood and you're looking for uh, a, a, a medical uh, professional 
who will help you with the whole body approach. What are the kind of people you would look for? It's, I think, pretty easy to tell. A lot of medical practices nowadays have websites where you can learn more about them. You can also, people can meet their doctors and they can interview doctors. A lot of doctors do meet and greets with their patients to get a feel for if you have someone that you are comfortable with, that you're going to be able to ask questions, that they're going to listen to you. This is all just as important as their whole overall approach, that they're not going to tell you that symptoms are something you just have to live with or that you just have to accept because you're getting older. That's like my <laughs> do not accept that. Okay, so it's, it's not difficult once you put in a little bit of effort, a little bit of research, meeting a doctor and being willing to change if you're not having the experience of being listened to and your issues uh, and concerns taken seriously and referrals made as needed. Well, uh, I thank you. This has just been another fascinating uh, uh, conversation. And uh, that's why we always look forward to uh, we never know what the subject's going to be. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But it's always fascinating your approach uh, about caring about the whole body and the whole person and not just uh, uh, the, uh, the pinky versus the thumb doctor. <laughs> Dr. Liz, once again, thank you so very much. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.